South Korea now has a fully operational THAAD battery on its soil. The nation's defense ministry says that together with the Patriot missiles already in place, Seoul will have a multi-layered defense. Oh Jung-hee tells us what South Korea can now do to intercept North Korean missiles and what else it's got planned to beef up its security. We have been tracking the movements of a mobile launcher for an intercontinental ballistic missile. There is now today speculation that if there is a launch, it could be on a flattened trajectory into the Pacific as opposed to the uh, high altitude launches that we've been seeing in the past few months. That could be more of a threat to the United States. And yes, this adding more urgency to the deployment overnight by the U.S. military of four THAAD anti-missile launchers. Two were already in place just to the south of where we are right now in Seoul. There was some local protest. China sees them as a threat. Now with the fully operating THAAD battery in Songju, Gyeongsangbuk-do province, South Korea's defense network against North Korea missiles is much more sophisticated. Seoul's defense ministry says THAAD covers a much wider area compared to the current Patriot missiles and therefore will fill up the vacuum and military capability until South Korea fully develops its KAMD, or Korean Air and Missile Defense System. THAAD is capable of intercepting incoming missiles at high altitudes of 40 to 150 kilometers, while PAC-3 hits missiles at 15 to 40 kilometers off the ground, and PAC-2 covers altitudes below. Such a multi-layered system will grant several opportunities for South Korea and the U.S. to intercept incoming North Korean missiles. But experts still point out that missiles from Pyongyang may fly over a much shorter range and therefore fall before THAAD can actually detect them and intercept them. They also say having only one THAAD battery can't block numerous missiles flying from Pyongyang simultaneously. If we want a preemptive strike against North Korean missiles, then we need to know exactly where the regime plans to fire its missiles from, which means we need more satellites for detection. Defense authorities should also consider ways to nullify the North's missile capabilities through cyber attacks or interference by electromagnetic pulses. South Korea is still working to complement its current defense network and significantly bolster its own missile defense capabilities, namely called three-pillar defense system. Defense Minister Song Yong-mu laid out options such as the purchase of SM-3 interceptors, an anti-ballistic missile system similar to THAAD, but one that can shoot down missiles at higher altitudes and over a longer range. Oh Jung-hee, Arirang News. Position now, and you know the new orders. You see the numbers just like I see the new numbers. It's been uh, tens of billions of dollars more in investment. And each day, new equipment is delivered, new and beautiful equipment, the best in the world, the best anywhere in the world, by far. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to have to use it on North Korea. If we do use it on North Korea, it will be a very sad day for North Korea.
defense system is fully deployed in South Korea after the final four launches went in on Thursday. It will shore up protection from a North Korean missile strike, but China is still deeply unhappy uh, with the move, as you just heard. And with the final piece of the jigsaw going in, our Ian Shin takes a look at what happens going forward. Despite hundreds of local residents protesting against the government's decision to temporarily deploy four additional bad launchers in Songju County, some 300 kilometers south of Seoul, the deployment went as scheduled. Despite such expected moves, South Korea has finished stationing four additional THAAD launchers in Seongju County on a temporary basis and are now fully operational. While the deployment is deemed necessary in light of escalating missile threats from North Korea, local residents, unconvinced their livelihoods and health will not be affected by THAAD's presence there, staged angry protests. Kim Hyun-bin has the latest. South Korea's defense ministry announced on Thursday that the four additional THAAD launchers are now inside the base in Songju and are completely installed. We have temporarily installed four additional THAAD launchers to protect our citizens from North Korea's growing nuclear and missile threats. The ministry says Seoul and Washington decided to speed up the deployment in view of North Korea's provocations in recent weeks, including two ICBM launches and a sixth nuclear test. The ministry emphasized that the deployment is just temporary for now and added that it will only decide to permanently install the battery after a thorough environmental analysis of the THAAD site. We will conduct a strict environmental analysis of the THAAD site and once the results are out, we will make a final decision on whether to permanently deploy THAAD. Soon after the four additional THAAD launchers left Osan Air Base bound for Songju in the early hours of Thursday morning, Hundreds of protesters clashed with police who tried to clear the way for the deployment. There were some scuffles as police attempted to break up a gathering of some 400 local residents and activists at a community center near the U.S. base in Songju County, where the THAAD battery is stationed. Local residents opposed the THAAD deployment, claiming the battery could make the village a military target. They also said electromagnetic waves from the THAAD's X-band radar could cause health and environmental problems. Prime Minister Lee nak addressed the issue in a press conference on Thursday, saying that the nation's security needs to be the priority now. The government had no choice but to deploy THAAD for national security purposes and to protect people from North Korea's nuclear and missile advancements and its provocations. Prime Minister Lee expressed his apologies to the people living in Songju for not accepting their demand to stop the deployment. Lee also wished for the quick recovery of residents and police officers injured during the protests. The Prime Minister's statement was echoed by the nation's defense, interior and environment ministers during a joint briefing. South Korea needs to secure regional safety and the U.S. needs to protect its troops on the Korean Peninsula with the missile defense system. In the worst-case scenario, the U.S. could decide to withdraw its forces from the Korean Peninsula without such a mechanism, which will put the long-held Seoul-Washington alliance in jeopardy. However, the complete installment of the anti-missile system could still be more than a year away, as a comprehensive environmental assessment of the area, a complicated process that includes public hearings, needs to take place before South Korea makes the ultimate decision on the permanent deployment of the system. The assessment is a crucial step that's directly related to the environmental impact and the health of residents around Songju area. Ideally, it should have been done before the temporary deployment, but with the recent missile and nuclear threats from the North Korea, it seems the government had no choice but to rush deployment. Amid the ongoing deployment of THAAD, South Korea is looking to significantly bolster its own missile defense capabilities, according to Seoul's top defense chief. Defense Minister Song Young-woo says the South Korean military wants to establish a multi-layered air defense network to better counter North Korea's evolving missile threats. Seoul's options include the purchase of SM-3 interceptors, an anti-ballistic missile system similar to that of THAAD, but one that could shoot down a missile at higher altitudes and at a longer range. And this follows President Trump's remarks this week that the U.S. was willing to ease its arms restrictions to 